Hey guys, Emily the Trimmer here, doing a little video this morning to explain something called laminitis and founder. Common, common topics associated in hoof care. Uh, one of the first things you learn about, really, when you learn hoof care from your mentor or from the school you go to. So, first recap over tools. These are bad. Bad. Don't use them. Please note they say China. They all are stamped China because they're made in China. Nothing against China, but these are low quality garbage nippers. We don't use these. I have them as shoe pullers because I'm too cheap to buy a new pair of shoe pullers. 1999 sold at every tractor supply and feed store around the nation. These gems, garbage. I would throw them to prove a point, but they'd probably go through the floor of my old farmhouse. So we won't do that. We'll set them down right over there. These are real nippers. These are GE 12 inch easy nippers. They are made by a guy named George Irwin, although George Irwin passed away quite a while ago. They still bear his name and his family brand. Interesting little tidbit of information. These run $275 to $350, depending on your source or where you buy them. They are the world wide standard of quality nippers. These are Lamborghinis of the nipper world. There are some other very high quality nippers, but this is what you get if you call a supplier and you say, I would like the best of the best of the highest quality that you have. They say, ta-da, and they hand you these. GE also makes nippers in other lengths and other sizes. These are their smaller size. These are actually designed for ponies. Um, they can be used on all sorts of critters. I also use them on zebus. That's a small form of cattle. Um, I've threatened to use them on my husband's toenails, but we're not doing that just yet. Now, these nippers do the exact same thing as these bad boys, okay? Everybody knows these, everybody loves them, been around forever. You know why they've been around forever? Because they work and because they're cheap and they do a job and they do their job well. Now, nobody is cutting into the meat of your finger with these, okay? We use these to take off the excess nail. Oh, like that. Oh, spin for a better view. Like that. Look at that. Takes it right off. Easy peasy, right? Needed to trim my nails anyway, so I got a good head start. These and these are interchangeable tools. Ugh! Okay, they do the exact same thing. Nobody is taking this pair of nippers and cutting off down deep into the toe. And if you are, you certainly were not trained. You do not know how to use them and you don't know how to use them properly. If you are not trained, if you have not served an apprenticeship, and if you don't know how to use these, you should not have them. Shouldn't use them in your business either. So these and these, same thing. Now that we've covered some tools, Let's talk laminitis and founder. Now I've got some examples for you. Trigger warning, if you're kind of sensitive, and I'm not saying that lightly, I mean that seriously. I have a picture I'm gonna show you. This picture is of a horse hoof. Now this horse passed away from natural causes. The owner was very nice and donated its lower legs to science and for educational purposes. So after this horse had passed away, the owner gave us permission to do a dissection on it to teach, which is great. That's great. We really appreciate people that do that. Um, it furthers the science for all of us to know better what's going on. So, picture coming. Okay. This is the inside of a horse hoof that has had the hoof capsule removed, meaning the nail from the outside, that hard bit that you see that steps on your toe and hurts really bad, that's been removed. Now, a pig is exactly the same anatomy. It's all the same, okay? So, the only difference between this picture right here and a pig is that if this were a pig, it would have two toes and two dew claws out the back. The anatomy functionally is the same. This is the lower leg from a feral hog that was sustainably resourced, okay? Ethically sourced. Um, in fact, it was hit by a car. So um, this animal was not hunted. This animal was not purchased. It was um, hit by a car tragically on the road. And um, I was able to get some bones from it to teach fellow pig people. Okay, so this bottom bone right here, this little bottom bone, this is what's inside your pig's hoof. It's called P3, otherwise known as the third phalange. In a horse, or in a pig, or in a cow, 
or in anything with a cloven hoof. It's also referred to as the coffin bone. That's not a made up name. That's actually what it's called. And it's called a coffin bone because if you break it, your animal's probably not gonna live real long. So now that we know what the bone looks like and we can look at what the inside looks like, we are going to look at right here, this right here, it's called the lamina. If you're talking to somebody in the EU, they call it the lamella, which I think sounds fancier, but we call it the lamina. The lamina is like fish gills. It looks just like fish gills or the bottom of a, of a mushroom. If you look at the gills on the bottom side of a mushroom, these act as Velcro, literally, to hold the hoof capsule to the hoof. Now, you can tell here there's a lot of blood flow in there. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of blood flow. Horses have right down here, it's called the circumflex artery, and it runs all the way around that. And that artery is responsible for pumping the blood back up their leg because there's not a lot of muscle down there, right? Muscles contract, they pump blood, they don't have it. We have the circumflex artery. Hoof flexion moves, it pumps the blood back up the leg. Hoof care 101 for those that know. Now, the bottom of the hoof, once again, this is a horse, Pigs don't have a frog, so we're gonna kind of ignore that. But you see there's called the corium, and the corium right here, right? Eh, that's what the bottom of the hoof is attached to. That sucker is held on like Velcro. Now let me tell you, I have done a fair share of dissections, and removing a hoof capsule, it's not easy. It's not easy, and it's not easy on purpose. It's designed to be held together strong and steady, hard and fast, so that they can run miles, root up trees, dig up branches, play and do zoomies, and not have their hoof capsule get degloved and come off. Okay, anatomy lesson complete. We have the P3 in the bottom of the foot, which is covered by the lamina and the corium that attaches your hoof capsule to it. Okay, moving on, next step. The next step is, generally with pigs, 90% of the time, diet. Let's talk diet. If you have a diet super high in sugar, which can be grazing on grass before 12 noon because as the sun rises, the sugars come up in the grass and the sweetest grass of the day is gonna be before noon. Lowest sugar content is gonna be in the middle of the night because as the sun sets, it goes back down into the dirt. Science! So if you have a pig that's grazing before noon, if you have a pig that eats over 50% fruit in their diet, if you have a pig that's eating carrots, tomatoes, apples, nonstop, blueberries, sugary poofs, cereal, you name it, those high glycemic index foods and veggies, mainly fruits or processed foods, your pig is gonna get inflammation in their lamina. Now we know the lamina, right? These little fish gills. And those little fish gills are charged with holding the hoof capsule to the bone, right? That's its only job. Hold that hard and fast to it. If that happens, it can also be from hormone issues. Sometimes it can be an anesthesia reaction. Sometimes it can be stress. There are other causes, but 90% of the time, let's say it's diet because it is. That lamina gets really inflamed, okay? And it hurts. And I'm saying that with a capital H, it hurts. That lamina gets inflamed in humans too. When you smash your finger with a hammer or you catch it in a door and you know how we always go, Ugh! okay? Now that's not so bad in a human because the pad of our finger, this tissue here, this can all swell, right? This is tissue, it can swell and it can puff up and we got room for expansion. Now in a pig or a horse or a donkey or a mule or a cow or a goat or, Pick your hard-hoofed animal, doesn't matter. This happens in giraffes, okay? This happens in rhinos. This will happen in any creature with a hoof, okay? Pigs are not special in this regard. That lamina gets really, really inflamed and it is stuck between a super hard hoof capsule and a bone. Now, pigs are lucky in one sense that they have two toes that can bear weight, right? They have two toes on their feet. Now, a horse only has one. On a horse, if they get laminitis, I guarantee you, you're gonna walk outside and it's gonna look like somebody hit your horse in the leg with a baseball bat. They sit back on their hind end real far and they put their front legs out in front of them this way and they do that because horses, like any other four-legged animal, bear about 80% of their weight on their front legs. They're lighter on their hind end than they are on their front end. Horses are at about 75%, pigs that are about 80. We know this because of testing. 
Science, it's good. Reading is good. These are all books, all things. Well, except those, those are, these, those are cookbooks. <laughs> I don't cook, but I have them because they look good up there. But these, right, these, these are all real books and those are just the ones on my shelf. My phone is currently being propped up by an amazing hoof care book I have in front of me. Now, when they have that inflammation in their feet, there's a couple things we can do to treat it. The first thing you can do is cold hose their legs and in horses, sometimes we even stand them in buckets of ice water. Because the perfusion of blood to their foot is so intense, and it is so pressure packed in there, it's very, very painful. And the quickest way to reduce that inflammation aside from medication is ice water. We still do this with some pigs. I'll have people stand them in a kiddie pool with ice water and it's super cold water, put some cucumbers in there, low glycemic index treats, right? Because we're not trying to make the problem worse by dumping more sugar into their system. So we put those treats in there, we have them stand on that cold water. Okay, the second way you're gonna get laminitis commonly is toes that are way too long. Now, I have another thing I'm gonna show you here. Got it here, right here in my lap. Saved this for a reason, because this is a beauty. So if you have a pig with really, really long toes, and we know that functionally, this pig, okay, these bones came off of about a 375 pound, three-year-old female feral hog. Um, she lived in California. California breeds some big size hogs out there. They're not little like some places. We have good, good size feral hogs. I don't have giant hands, okay? We're looking at how little those bones really are in there. They're not huge. We're not talking huge bones, okay? So when that toe gets really long and this pig is continually trying to walk, that long toe acts like walking on a flipper on a beach, only it's attached and it's hard. It's not plastic and movable like a silicone flipper. That leverage from trying to walk will continually leverage this right here. Now, eventually, mechanical stress will break that bond. Now, that's laminitis. When you have the lamina is inflamed and it's irritated, but it's all still attached, that's laminitis. Now, if laminitis progresses, gets worse, isn't treated, or you didn't catch it in time, or whatever, it continues, because the process continues to march on, eventually, the attachment points from the bone right here to the hard hoof wall right here get so inflamed that they tear. And when they tear, it's painful, right? You're making a physical void within the hoof as the bone rotates down. This leads to two problems. Problem number one, this bone is now poking down at an angle it should not be, and that will actually demineralize the bone and dissolve the bone away. If anybody wants to see it, I got some bitchin' x-rays that show this. It's called bone demineralization from force, okay? Happens all the time. In horses, it ends up looking like a genie slipper. It goes bloop, looks awful. Okay, now, when this happens, because it should be like this, right? Real close to each other. When this detaches and rotates down, you're making space. And you know what that space fills up with? That space fills up with blood. And blood is a liquid when it fills in there, but over time, even in the con constraints of this toe, it will dry out over time. Now this toe is off of a pig that has never had a hoof trim before. Ugh. This was a four-year-old pig getting his very first hoof trim. Now, trust me when I tell you, his toes were way too long. And he was on not a great diet. It was probably a combination of leverage, force, and diet creating to the issues in this foot. So you can see, oh, and there's our toe. This is the bottom walking surface. That's the top. Pig stands like that, right? This is the bottom. That's the top. That's a good size hole. And guess what? I nippered this toe off. My nippers didn't do this. They're innocent. Don't falsely accuse my nippers of damage that happened a year to two years before I did this. Now, I know this happened a year to two years before I did this because the length of the hoof takes roughly nine months to a year to grow out a complete pig hoof. From the coronet band at the very top to the tippy tippy toe for the length of it to grow from here to here is right about a year. Now, I know how much toe I cut off and I can tell you this probably happened a year and a half ago. He had never had his feet done. So this blood pocket right here, okay, 
That is the separation between the lamina and the hoof wall. That's the void it makes. It's a good size void. Now, as I kept nippering back, because once again, we're only nippering off dead tissue. Nobody's going into live tissue with these things. They're just like our finger fingernail clippers, right? We clip the stuff off the end. That hole right there is part of this trim right here. Doop. There's the blood pocket. It was smiling. That was just funny. That's the toe backed up. And that's what it looks like finished. I'm going to let this play one more time. This is a TikTok, but I'm lazy and it was easy. See how long that toe is? That's laminar separation. This was this pig's first trim. Now, if I pause it, oop, oh, okay. Right here, when we go back, if we zoom in real close, you see how separated that one toe is and you see how that other toe is thin? That's because this toe right here didn't founder. It just had laminitis. This toe went all the way through the process because it's very easy to have one toe go and not another. I've seen dew claws foundered. I've seen main toes foundered. I've seen only hind feet. That's very rare, but it happens. So this toe just had laminitis. That toe is a founder. That separation right there is the amount of separation that that coffin bone rotated downwards, and that's the blood pocket that had to fill it. See if it'll play again. Trim it back. Finished product of the toe. Finished product of the bottom. You see that bruising that's still there on that toe? That bruising is still there because it's had a lot of leverage pushing on it. Now, next time when I go to trim that pig, which is going to be a couple months here coming up because he's on a schedule now, that damage isn't going to be there. It's going to trim out. However, if your pig gets laminitis, it can heal. It can heal. You can regulate the diet. You can regulate the environment. You can change these things and it'll heal. If your pig is foundered, if your horse is foundered, if your cow is foundered, once foundered, forever foundered. You will never, never undo it. Now we know this once again because of science. So in the horse community, because there's a lot more research done on horses, We've had some vets do some crazy things in years past. That's what vets are supposed to do. That's how we learn and grow and evolve. Now, a piece that grows into that space where this void is, where that blood pocket is, a structure grows. And it's not native to the hoof, okay? This grows as a result of trauma. And it's called the laminar wedge. It is exactly what it sounds like. It's not horn hoof material. It's not corium or lamina. It's this weird halfway in between kind of cuticle-y looking strange horn material growing in. And it literally acts as a wedge burp, 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 that grows over time. Foundered pigs need a shorter trim rotation. They need between four and six months, ideally, to keep on top of that. Because if you let those feet get long, the laminar wedge gets bigger, it gets more and more uncomfortable, and then you get into mechanical foundering. Not good. Not good. It's a process you don't want to start. So, in wrap-up, founder and laminitis are generally caused by diet. They can be caused by mechanical issues, such as super long toes. They are not caused from the tools being used. It is not caused because a fairy came and said, boop, and booped them on the snoot and said, now you got it. Um, I've seen pigs founder. This was tragic, but I've seen it happen actually more than once. A pig bolted out the front door, ran down the street, said, born free, and they took off running, running down that pavement, running down that asphalt. That pig's feet is not used to running full force on a very hard surface. This also happens to horses that are, it's called match racing. And it's racing, but not at the racetrack. They run down city streets. Um, it's a horrible, unethical practice that is done across the U.S. And it really should be stopped. Pigs are not designed to run on hard asphalt if they have only ever lived in your house on carpet. That force, the downward force of them hitting their foot and then rotating off, that's called breakover concept for another day. I'll speak up for those in the back that are learning as we go. The breakover on toes that are too long will mechanically leverage separation every stride. Every stride. 
that can't be fixed. It is what it is. We manage it the best we can, but it can never be fixed. It can never be repaired. It can never be healed. That damage is done. The ship has sailed. The dock has rotted. It's finished. We can maintain it. We can work with it. We can manage that diet really closely because once you have a pig that's foundered, laminitis occurs a lot more easily. It's kind of like a concussion in a person. Once you hit your head really hard, fewer and fewer hits that are softer and softer can make the same result, which is you having a horrible concussion. It's called post-concussion syndrome. Happens in football players, happens in wrestlers, happens in people that fight. Oddly, happens a lot in soccer. I don't know what you guys are doing kicking each other in the head. I know it looks like a ball, but it's not. Happens a lot in soccer. Post-concussion syndrome is no joke. It leads to all sorts of problems. Same thing in pigs with their feet. Flaminitis is not good. Founder is worse. Maintaining that the best we can with the proper trim as possible is the key to success. Now, do we trim a foundered hoof the same way we trim a pig with beautiful little maintained feet? Nope. They're different trims for different animals, for a different setting, for a different situation on a different day. These are topics we'll cover in another form, but please, please don't blame these for this. They literally have absolutely nothing to do with each other. I heard a lady once tell me that she heard that the sun on really, really hot days in Texas makes a very strange sound. You know what she was hearing? Cicadas. <laughs> because they come out in summer. That's not the sun making the sound on a very hot day. That is cicadas in the bush and in the trees making noise because it is a hot day in summer and that's their mating season. Let's not associate this with this. They're not the same thing. This can help this. It's a concept. Hope everybody has a good day. I know I am. I'll wave bye-bye. Wave bye-bye, everybody. From my P3s to yours. Hope everybody has a good one.